guys, how's it going? It's a gorgeous day today out in the garden. It's almost 50 degrees, no wind, the sun is out, and we're not even to mid-January yet. I can't even believe it. It's so weird. I'm not used to having winters like this, but I am super thankful for it. I thought it'd be a really good day to get some container maintenance done. And so I thought I'd just show you what I do um, at the beginning of a season with my containers, because depending on the material that they're made out of, I'll either repaint them, stain them, or give them a really good clean. So there are three groups of pots that I kind of want to get through. There's a really good chance I'm not going to get it all done today. So you might see me in a second set of clothes toward the end of the video because I might be finishing it up tomorrow. But I want to um, clean up our Crescent True Drop self-watering containers, a couple of our wicker look-alike pots, and then these window boxes on the house, I might be painting them black. And I'm going to save this one for last because I've kind of... Um, like waffled on the decision. I almost painted them last year before we had them installed. Uh, and then I decided, you know what? It's easier just to keep them white for one season, see what I think, you know, live with it, see if I like it that way. And then I can always paint them black this year or, you know, in future years. So I did put it out to our members on YouTube and just asked like, what would you do? Should I paint them white or black? And so far I've seen a few votes for black. So I'm just gonna wait on that till the end. I'll kind of tally up the results and then I might be painting those in this video. So let's head to the barn quick and then I will show you um, the self-watering containers first. We keep them up in the barn through the winter. We get them all cleaned out and the hard water staining on them is so bad and I've tried every cleaner that has been suggested to me so far um, and then everything that we usually use at the garden center that works if it's a kind of a light amount of hard water staining but this is a pretty good amount having a really hard time so I'm thinking paint is the way to go. So they're up in the loft here in our barn. These stairs are a little scary. In fact, we are thinking of, you can see if I back up, this is where our doors are, our other two doors. We're having a new set of stairs built. Let me turn the camera the other direction. So a new set of stairs is being built probably in the next few weeks, right on the back side of the barn, and they won't be quite as steep. So we're gonna like cut into the floor and go up through there and they'll have a railing, so it'll be proper. And then I think we're gonna have a third garage door cut into the front of the barn eventually. So we just have a bunch of storage up here, all of Aaron's Christmas lights, um, just tote after tote after tote of Christmas lights. He also got some um, on clearance after Christmas for next year. Anyway, there are the self-watering containers. You can see right here what kind of damage we're looking at. Of course, you know, after they grow a little bit in the summer, you can't even see the pots because usually the flowers reach the ground. But for, you know, a few weeks there, you can see them. And I don't really like that look. So they're thankfully really lightweight. So I'm gonna just take them down one at a time down the stairs. I'm gonna put them out in our driveway uh, and give them just a quick light spray paint just to barely cover the hard water. Um, by the time I pull the plants out in summer, you'll see the same kind of damage. Um, but at least for the first little bit, they'll look fresh and clean. All right, guys, I've got all 14 of the pots down here, so I'm a little bit out of breath. I went up and down those stairs 14 times, and now I'm feeling quite warm. It's feeling warmer than 50 degrees out here today. Um, before I paint them, I am going to brush them down a little bit because I did notice some dirt and spider egg sacs and stuff like that and uh, paint won't stick to those so I want them to be fairly clean before I do this and let me show you the paint I'm going to use. So I did load a basket up inside of all the supplies I was going to need. I've got a rag for the stain. This is the stain I'll use for the next set of pots. Um, I am going to be wearing gloves when I paint and stain today and this is the paint that I chose. This is satin granite uh, paint and primer it uh, will adhere to plastic and that's kind of what these pots are made out of. I think that this will work out nicely. Let's check. Pretty darn close. And you can actually see the water staining maybe a little bit better out here now that they're out in the sun. Kind of what I am trying to cover. And see, there's like dirt and stuff, so I'll take care of that. And before I paint them, I do have to say that Crescent Garden, where these pots came from, and we have worked with them in the past, probably wouldn't recommend that you spray paint your pots. They probably would say to try to remove the hard water, which I've tried to do several times. It's just a lot of work with 14 big containers. And spray paint is what I do with my other pots. It works really well. It makes 
makes them look good for the season. And anything that's not like metal or concrete, those I pretty much leave alone. And that's why I choose lighter colored concrete. You might notice that a lot of our statues and fountains are light colored um, because of our hard water. And if you do that, the hard water doesn't really show up if you choose those lighter colors and then you don't have to worry about doing stuff like this. Okay, so let's get going. So I did go through and I loosened all of the water indicators. This is what tells you how much water is in your uh, reservoir um, so that I could kind of lift it up a little bit while I paint around it because it's kind of important that you're able to see those. So I can't get any paint on those. Here they are all done. They look so much better. And I'm sorry about the lighting, you guys. I know that they're like in sun and shade. I thought I was putting them in a spot that got more sun consistently throughout the afternoon, at least in the winter. Even though the sweeping willow does not have any leaves, it's still casting some weird shadows on these pots. Um, but I am glad that I got a few extra cans of paint because I can let these dry and then I'm gonna come through and touch up any spots that I may have missed. But overall, even if I didn't touch anything up, they look 100 times better. So that didn't take near as long as I thought it was going to. It takes longer to get them up and down out of the barn, I think. So we're gonna go to where the wicker pots are. I've got all my supplies right here. First couple are right behind the gazebo. So here they are. This is where the pellet walkway is. Um, and then the pergola here, and it looks like I need to do some cleaning. Look at the concrete, what a mess. So you can see on the sides of the pot, it's starting to kind of like the finish is coming off a little bit. Um, and I don't know how much of it's finished and how much of it's hard water, um, but I'm gonna give these a good scrape down with my brush and then we will stain them so that they'll all look a little bit more like it looks right here. I think I want my kneeling pad for this part of the job. I should have used it on the last one. Oh well. Doesn't that look so much better? I just love starting the season with pots looking like this. And of course I can't get it perfect because the finish isn't the same all the way around now that it's starting to kind of wear off, but it looks miles better than it did. And the pot on this side didn't look quite as bad as that one, but I'm still gonna give it a once over so that they match. These look so much better, and once they're all dry, I'm gonna bring a blower out here and clean up this concrete. But I'm just using a regular wood stain in the color Dark Walnut. I'll use Danish oil too if that's what I have on hand, or just any like darker colored wood stain. I'm not really particular. So I did wear gloves. I have a bag of disposable gloves on hand most all the time for stuff like this. I used to never protect my hands from anything. And now I usually use them if I'm staining, painting, or working with any kind of insecticide, herbicide, anything like that. I will wear them. Um, and I also used an old rag. Um, I didn't have an old paintbrush on hand. Usually I like to just stock up on cheap paintbrushes uh, for projects like this so that I can just toss them when I'm done. But I just used an old cleaning rag. It worked just as good. I just remembered that I do have one more of these basket planters up closer to the house. So let's run up to that one. This is where the last container is. I've got it next to actually an incredible hydrangea. I haven't really done much clean out. In fact, I just brought the bag up and cut back some lamium and lavender that was right here because it was all around the base of the container. And this one does not look half bad. It looks pretty darn good. There's a couple of spots, especially like on this side. Um, but while I have everything out, I'm just gonna go ahead and restain it. Pot is nice and fresh and it's just temporarily sitting in here just kind of as a space filler because I do have incredible hydrangeas. There's one right here and then there's four more that kind of create a hedge, a swooped hedge right behind these boxwoods right here. And they do get quite large, um, but I brought them home last year from the garden center because they were all damaged in a windstorm. A big tree fell right on top of all five of them and broke a bunch of branches. In fact, you can see on this one, like, well, maybe. The lightning's kind of weird. Let's see if I can cast a shadow on it. Ooh. Yeah, you can see there's only four stems. One, two, three, four, and then it's kind of open right there. 
The other three didn't look as bad, but this one was actually the worst. Um, so I put it here and then put the pot here just to kind of fill the space and distract <laughs> distract your eye from looking at this one and then I've got lavender in here as well so I've got the three here that I cut back they were just so intermixed with the lamium that was around the base of this pot I just cut it all back I just need to come in and rake now and then the tater tot arborvita and then the lavender takes off and goes down the whole walkway which I'll wait till it warms up a little bit more to cut the lavender back I am really looking forward to how this bed looks this year I've got I think 600 white tulips in here. I actually see a couple of tulip bulbs on top of the soil, which means the squirrels have been in here. And that kind of worries me because I've seen that in quite a few of the areas that I planted bulbs and I'm just hoping that I have a few left after the winter. Um, but I've got another pot right here um, that's also full of clematis and it's got some other flowers in it and it could use a stain, a new fresh stain job as well. So I feel like that's how this day is going. I just keep seeing new things that need to be done. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna even get to the window boxes today, but I just checked YouTube and it looks like everybody is voting for black so far there are no votes for white. It's still scary to me. So there's the pot right there. It doesn't look too bad, a little bit of scuffing on the bottom, but I need to clean it out anyway because it's right by the door we enter all the time and it's looking so just yuck. Anyway, this whole area needs a good clean out. I haven't touched it since fall, but that part will wait for another day. There's Benjamin. Hi, baby. Hi, bud. What are you doing? Did you just get up from a nap? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, sorry. I don't even remember where I left off. I get so distracted by Benjamin. He's so cute. Just got up from a nap, but the pot looks amazing. All shined up and cleaned out. I wish I would have done that sooner. Um, and this whole area needs a thorough going over here, hopefully soon. Um, but I was just starting to gather my stuff up and I realized I have one more wicker pot I need to clean out and, and stain. I don't know how I keep missing these pots. I only thought I had two wicker pots planted up. Apparently I had all four of them planted. So I think we'll do that and then we'll call it a day just for now. And that way I can kind of, uh, gather myself, read through all of the, um, comments on YouTube and I will decide. I'll make a final decision on whether or not these window boxes back here are going to be painted black. So anyway, let's head out to that wicker pot. All right. So this container is out by the tool shed. This is a um, juniper topiary right here and it's looking like it's doing really well. And then I had lemon coral and diamond frost euphorbia planted around it. It was a beautiful container. I loved it. So lemon coral is not hardy enough for our zone five. So I'm going to clean that out and then we'll just shine that pot up quick. All right guys, so that's it for this part of the video. I'm really thrilled with everything I was able to get done today. I mean, especially since it's so early in the year, that just means I'll have more time later on to enjoy the garden when things are usually nuts out here. So. I will pick this video up hopefully tomorrow and we'll talk about what we're going to do with the window boxes. All right guys, so fast forward about a month because that's how long it's been since I started this video. You know, life just kind of happened. We went on a couple trips. It's been really rainy, so I haven't really been able to, like there wasn't a good time to finish painting outside. You can see that the window baskets are still white on the house. Actually, let me go back toward those real quick. So I did put the question out to our members on YouTube whether or not I should paint the window boxes black or leave them white. Most all of you guys said I should paint them black, which I kind of agree with. I think black would look really nice, especially on this window because it doesn't have uh, shutters. The rest of them have black shutters, so the white doesn't look as like stark. It looks a little stark on this window to me. Um, but here's the deal. Since I let so much time lapse between when I like was all gung-ho about painting them, I kind of lost a little bit of my bravery and I just I'm not a detail person when it comes to projects like that so I know I would end up with paint runs or uneven like thickness of paint so I think I'm gonna either do one of two things I'm going to hire a professional to paint them for me which is we've got too many other projects going on this year um, at this point anyway 
or um, I might go ahead and buy new window boxes eventually that maybe have a little bit more detail on them that are already black and that way I don't have to deal with any touch-up painting or if I accidentally scratch it or something like that I won't have to mess with you know fixing it um, these the reason why I went with these initially is because it was the only window box I could find that said that they were self watering and I was kind of hoping they'd work like the Crescent Gardens true drop containers work but they don't quite do that they might buy you a couple of days um, when it's cooler out but in the heat of summer I was still watering them fairly consistently um, but anyway that's why I went with those to begin with so for now they're going to remain white I still think that they look nice and I love having them on the house so basically today I got more paint and we're gonna put a second coat on the self-watering containers out here and Aaron said he was gonna come out here and help me with that it's a beautiful day today it's like 51 degrees sunny no wind, it's perfection. All right, all 14 of them are done. They have their second coat of paint. Of course, it's very shadowy from the willow tree. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. I pulled one out into the sun so you could take a closer look. And I think that they turned out pretty darn good. And you can see the hard water. I mean, if you remember from the beginning, they had some pretty bad hard water standing on the outside. So I think that this is a great way to kind of start fresh. Well, this video turned into being a little bit different than I thought it was gonna be. First of all, I didn't think it was gonna take over a month to get it done. Um, and I thought I was gonna have a little bit more to show you with the painted window boxes. And I'm kind of glad that it took a little longer to get this done because it gave me a lot of time to think about it instead of like hauling off and getting into the middle of the project and making a mess of it and then having to call in somebody to fix it for me. So anyway, I know my limitations in this area um, so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video and just kind of seeing the process again I think I mentioned before that um, like Crescent Garden doesn't necessarily recommend that you paint your pots but I tried everything I could to get those hard water stains off and I had just such a hard time um, that I decided to go ahead and paint mine and I do think that they look a lot a lot better and I have like three or four extra cans so I can touch them up as the season goes if I need to or give them you know just a quick once over when I change them over for like maybe um, fall or something like that if we decide to do that can't remember if I've done that with these pots I don't think so I think I've just done summer anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one bye